In the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you how I evolved as a presenter, the tools I use currently, and some of the feedback that I received and also incorporated. This is a personal reflection of kind of my presentations. My presentation evolution can be categorized into six stages. Um, film club, school, university during my formal education, and then my jobs at LMU München, Uni Luxembourg, and uh, Catalyst since 2010. At an early age, um, during elementary school, I joined the local children's film club and soon presented at matinees introducing movies. But I didn't actually write the presentations. That was my mom. Um, then at school, transparent slides became my medium of choice. The motto at the time, write as little as possible so that you get as much text as you can onto a slide, because it was the age of students frantically writing stuff. Then once presentation software came, became available, the whole world changed. And over the years, I tried many different tools finally ending up at Reveal.js, which is the best one because it has most freedom for me. But of course, like so many others, I'm very guilty of the bullet point in my early age. Um, and also using rather small font sizes um, before I saw the light. And that came about 2006 when I was introduced to the edtech scene of North America, in particular George Siemens and Alan Levine. And then together with Lawrence Lessig, the founder of Creative Commons, they became my presentation heroes. And I created my own style, taking inspiration from those three in particular. And the one constant in my style is that I try to avoid bullet points as much as I can and um, encourage people to actually listen and not read the text. And um, now let me tell you a little bit about the tools that I'm using. Um, I oscillate between the vibrant style of using images and then the more austere one of using icons. And unfortunate, oh, fortunately, there is Unsplash and also um, the Noun Project. And because I do want to give credit to the people who created all these assets, I'm using Zotero to track them and um, make sure that I always cite the right sources. And as presentation software over the past, past five years, I've used predominantly Reveal.js, which is a fantastic tool because I can create presentations effortlessly, reuse styles, and also slides. But that is not where the tools stop. Um, I usually also record my presentations, unless I forget about them, and um, therefore use simple screen recorder and also shortcut to then edit them afterwards, but in a very simple style only. Then they are becoming available on YouTube. Um, the slides themselves can also be downloaded and uh, repurposed because they are all Creative Commons licensed. And um, I do that primarily so that I can actually listen to my presentations. And um, the second thing why I'm recording slides is because I'm a couch presenter. I live so far from everywhere else that it's actually hard for me to attend lots of conferences. So I do want to give back and enjoy um, listening to presentations from other people, so I want to do the same. And then, of course, by recording my presentations, I can learn from them and um, make things better in the future. I'd like to share one of the presentations that has been shared about 30,000 times, or looked at 30,000 times, because there was an earthquake, kind of a few minutes into my presentation. And um, that time is etched into my memory as well as that of the attendees because everybody just remembers that one. Um, over the years, I've received a lot of feedback from people and one of the things they've remarked on a lot is that they can see and hear the joy of me presenting. But there's also feedback that helped me challenge myself. Uh, for example, having live demonstrations during a presentation can be quite difficult um, because there's oftentimes not enough time for it. And so I try to do that, and it's really fascinating working in that medium and making sure that it works. And the other piece that I wanted to highlight is that one person told me that I look down when I present online, and that also then translates into looking down on people. So what I'm trying to do now, in particular when I'm presenting online, is that I change my way of um, having the technology set up so that I don't look down on people. And so all the time I'm learning from 
these experiences and also um, trying to stay curious in order to make things better in my presentations. Thank you.